Je vais livrer un message du gouverneur général, de la gouverneure générale. Monsieur le Speaker, je souhaite vous informer la House que Her Excellency, le gouverneur général, a vu fit pour autoriser cette chambre à procéder à l'élection d'un speaker. Monsieur le Président, je désire Mr. informer speaker, la Chambre que Son Excellence, le gouverneur général, a autorisé à la Chambre de se choisir un président. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Conformément à l'ordre adopté mardi le 28 septembre 2023, je voudrais, avant de commencer cependant, dire à mon successeur, M. Rota, toute mon admiration pour le travail qu'il a effectué pendant ses deux mandats, qu'il a été un grand président et que nous nous souviendrons de lui pour son travail très bien, très bien réussi. Alors, merci, M. Rota. J'ai été, euh, été très heureux de remplacer temporairement à la présidence. Mon mandat se terminera aujourd'hui. Alors, euh, j'ai eu beaucoup de travail. Tellement de travail que je n'ai pas trouvé la limousine encore. Pas trouvé les clés de la résidence officielle. Pas trouvé les clés de la cave à vin. Je pas trouvé le formulaire pour mon augmentation de salaire. Mais vous vous, vous vous souviendrez de moi comme le président qui a été le moins longtemps sur le trône et le moins dispendieux. Conformément à l'ordre adopté, nous sommes rendus ici. Tous les députés devraient avoir reçu par courriel hier soir la liste des candidats à la présidence. This list is also available at the table on our comments if members wish to consult it before the vote. Avant de procéder, j'inviterai les députés dont le nom figure sur la liste des candidats et qui ne veulent plus se présenter à l'élection, de bien vouloir se lever et d'en informer la présidence en conséquence. Le député d'Argenteuil, la petite nation. Vous avez Merci, la parole. Monsieur le Président, pour votre excellent travail. Après considération, je désire retirer ma candidature. Alors... Further to the statement, the list of candidates is revised accordingly. So far, pursuant to standing order 3.1, the House must proceed to the speeches from each candidate for pour la, pour, comme candidat à la présidence. From each candidate for the speakership. Euh, Nonobstant tout article du règlement ou toute procédure et usage adoptée par cette Chambre, il pourrait aider les députés à identifier les candidats à la présidence. Et nous allons reconnaître en alphabétique order each candidate by name and by electoral district. When the last candidate to address the House completes his speech, Our, our, is our, our speech. I will leave the chair for 30 minutes, after which members will proceed to the election of the speaker. Maintenant, I will now call upon Sim, in Sim Casey, alphabetical order, Mr. Sean Casey, the Honorable Member for Charlottetown. I call minutes. upon him to address the House for not more than five minutes. The floor is yours. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Permettez-moi tout d'abord de Speaker. souligner que nous sommes First, sur le territoire traditionnel like et non cédé des Anishinaabe Algonquins qui habitent ces terres depuis millénaires. 
nous who have reconnaissons been here on these lands for millennia. la présence durable des Premières Nations, des Métis the et des Inuits sur ce territoire. It is with great humility that lands. I rise to offer my candidacy, candidacy as the Speaker of the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, I've been in the workforce for 34 years. One half of that time has been spent as a litigator. When I was called to the bar of Prince Edward Island in 1989, the presiding judge, Mr. Justice Gerard Mitchell, as he then was, reminded me that as a member of the bar, I was an officer of the court, and that my first duty was to the court. Not my clients, not my firm, the court. Throughout my legal career, there were professional differences, robust debates, and aggressive cross-examinations. But the respect for the administration of justice, the professional code of conduct, and the rule of law transcended everything. I offer this comment not to say that we need more lawyers in this House, for God's sakes we have enough already, <laughs> but to say that the level of respect for Parliament and the office of the Speaker has taken an incredible beating in this session of Parliament, especially in question period, and it doesn't need to. A vigorous and relentless prosecution of an issue is not made stronger by the repeated flouting of the rules of this place or by defying the Speaker. It denigrates this institution and all of us, its temporary occupants. I believe it's time for a reset, and the election of a Speaker in the middle of a parliamentary session is an historically unique opportunity to do just that. We can do better. And we must. If individual members are willing to be part of a collective effort to restore public confidence in the way we treat each other and the rules of Parliament, then I would be honoured to lead that cause. If, on the other hand, members are comfortable with the current state of decorum and level of respect for the office of the Speaker, please don't vote for me. J'étais élu pour la première fois. Au Parlement I was elected to Parliament for the first time in 2011. Dans ce With coin great pride, I took my seat over in that du corner à ce when à cette the House was in centre block. I was a member of the Third Party. Ans au sein I spent party. four years Puis as a member of the Third Party, then four years as a parliamentary secretary différents. to three different Et ministers. Les à titre de the past four years, de I have Cette been leader of a standing committee. So all of these experiences inform the action I take. So Je I will be able to put myself in the shoes of the members of parliament. The in events this place. of September 22nd were unfortunate, embarrassing, and hurtful. A good man with a deep respect for all of us and for this place acknowledged his mistake and gave up a role that he took extremely seriously as a servant of the house. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the honorable member for Nipissing to Miskaming for his service and to welcome him back to caucus. C'est maintenant au prochain président de veiller à ce que cela ne se reproduise plus jamais et à ce que les procédures et les protocoles nécessaires soient en place et appliquées à cette fin. Il est tout aussi important pour le nouveau président de rejoindre les communautés qui ont été blessées, y compris les Canadiens d'origine juive. Je suis prêt à accepter le Conseil des députés pour diriger cette sensibilisation. Take I want to thank my wife, Deirdre, and my family efforts. for their unwavering support in this pursuit. I am immensely grateful to the voters of Charlottetown who have sent me back to Parliament four mm -hmm. times to be their voice. Quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, after all the good wishes I received in the riding on the weekend, I really wish they were eligible to vote. <laughs> <laughs> I will bring a breadth of experience, tough love, progressive discipline, and a quick wit to the role of Speaker. If honourable members share my view that these are the key ingredients for Parliament at this point in our history, then I humbly ask for their support. And if I may, Mr. Speaker, tomorrow is my mum's birthday, and I know she's watching. Happy birthday, mum. Thank you.
I will now call open Mr. Chris Dantremont, the honorable member of West Nova. Merci beaucoup, uh, cher collègue, Thank dear colleagues. Much. It's an honor for me to stand before you today on the traditional territory of the Algonquin and Asinabi people to say a few words on my candidacy for Speaker of the House of Commons on the ongoing 44th Parliament. I would be first like to express my sincere thanks to the Member of Parliament for Nipissing to Miskaming for all the work that he accomplished as Speaker of the House of Commons over the last four years. It hasn't been easy any one of those days. C'est donc pour une seconde fois que je m'adresse à vous, chers collègues, en tant que I candidat speak to you à la présidence, alors que depuis 2021, certains de nous ont quitté et d'autres sont nouvellement arrivés. Colleagues, today I'm place. running to be your speaker. My last two years as deputy speaker of this house has confirmed my deep desire to continue to work as your speaker. My experience will assist you in the discharge of your responsibilities. Depuis mon arrivée à la Chambre des communes en 2019, j'ai appris à connaître plusieurs d'entre vous, collègues de tous les partis, un devoir essentiel pour moi, lequel que je continue à renforcer depuis ma nomination à titre de vice-président en 2021. Je vous remercie pour nos échanges et sachez que j'ai l'intention de maintenir cette approche, peu importe le résultat du vote, car l'amitié doit suivre dans cette Chambre. Collègues, je vous ai entendu et comme tous de vous, Je tiens à ce que nous puissions redonner cet endroit digne, ces lettres de noblesse. Il est en de la responsabilité du président à veiller que ce que le respect envers les députés, les règlements, le décorum et les procédures soient remises au centre de nos travaux parlementaires. Je suis convaincu que je serai en mesure de m'acquitter de I mes tâches de président afin que les importants pouvoirs et les privilèges de cette Chambre soient de nouveau priorisés. We must carry out our duties with held. diligence, honesty and respect, and you can count on me to lead by example. I will exercise my functions in a fair, non-partisan and firm manner, as it is important for me to protect the right to speak for each one of you in this place. As many of you know by now, I have a very calm French-Acadian demeanor, and I work well with others. In fact, these are traits that are strongly tied to my deep Acadian roots, where we as Nova Scotian Acadians have learned, once returning home from exile, to remain calm, be non-confrontational, and continuously strive for consensus, no matter the situation we find ourselves in. Let us remember that the last few years have been difficult. Last week was incredible. Where we find, where we have faced many challenges. Canadians are currently still going through a lot and are looking for stability and strong leadership at the core of our country's democracy. In this regard, I wish to lead an all-party approach and put my skill, ability, and experience to work that enable you, honourable members, to navigate the House of Commons in the safest and most effective way possible while you fulfil your very important responsibilities to Canadians. Je sais que je peux contribuer positivement à rassembler les membres de la Chambre plutôt que les diviser devant nos nombreuses devis. Le Président a la responsabilité de faire respecter les députés de tous les partis, leur force ainsi que leurs valeurs. Le Canada est un pays bilingue. Il est essentiel que le Président de la Chambre le soit aussi. Oui, il peut être en mesure de s'exprimer dans les deux langues officielles. The speaker Mais il est indispensable qu'il maîtrise les spécificités d'une langue et la culture d'un peuple, ce que je suis en mesure d'offrir. We know that elected representatives of this chamber is our duty to ensure the health of our democracy is a preserved and always well respected. It is up to us to elect a speaker who will truly be a guardian of this chamber. The speaker has a responsibility and privilege to lead by example at all times. A speaker that has a good handle of the rules, that can make quick decisions so meaningful, structured debate can happen. Que ce Parlement se termine dans quelques mois ou dans deux ans, je veux m'assurer que le travail des valeurs de cette Chambre reflète les attentes des Canadiens à l'égard de l'institution au centre de notre démocratie. Par-dessus tout, je veux m'assurer que chacun d'entre vous peut regarder avec confiance à la fin de cette session parlementaire et dire avec fierté qu'elle a été productive, positive et respectueuse. Il a été un honneur de servir comme votre député pendant les dernières deux ans. Il serait un honneur de devenir votre député pour vous soutenir dans vos responsabilités très importantes. 
Colleagues, I humbly ask for your vote today. Colleagues, je demande humblement vote vote aujourd'hui. I humbly ask for your votes today. And I can say maybe one of the first orders of duty, whoever becomes speaker today, is to maybe bring the heat down and I mean the temperature because my goodness, is it hot in here today? <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Thank Bonne you very journey. much. I look forward to your vote. I now Greg recognize Fergus. Mr. Greg Fergus, Honourable Member for Hall Elmer. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Cher Thank collègue. you, Mr. Speaker. Today, like all days, we pay our respects to the Anishinaabe Algonquin people on whose unceded land we stand. Regardless of what part of the country we come from, what political party we belong to, what our political ideas are. The fact is, is that each of us, every one of us in this chamber, frankly, has a lot more in common than we often care to admit. Nous partageons tous le souvenir de la première fois que nous avons franchi la porte de cette chambre the en tant que député nouvellement assermenté. As newly sworn Comme c'est le cas pour chacun d'entre nous, c'était et c'est toujours après la naissance de mes enfants et de mes petits-enfants I have children and grandparents, and other than those memories, my first day in the House was also one of the proudest days of my life. It was also a culmination of my life, lifelong love for Parliament. At the age of 14, I subscribed to and read Hanser. <laughs> <laughs> in 1988, I sat right there, right there at the foot of the Speaker's chair as a parliamentary page, where I was awed by the majesty of this sanctum of democracy, where I learned that Every MP from every party from every region impressed me with their love for this country and wanting to do better by their people. And I still feel that way 35 years later as I stand here before you asking for your vote to become Speaker of the House of Commons. But what brought us here today requires a response. Words matter. Symbols matter. Yes, I know. And as your speaker, I will restore quickly the honor, bring back the honor to this chamber. Les événements qui nous rassemblent aujourd'hui ont besoin d'être abordés. Have brought us here today. Les mots que nous utilisons. The words that we use matter. Les symboles comptent. Symbols matter. Je le sais pertinemment. I know that. Et en tant que votre président. Je vais and agir as your speaker, pour I will act de cette chambre. to restore the honour of this For place. For what motivates me and what I vow to work night and day to promote and advance can be summed up in one word. Respect. Le respect de notre démocratie the et respect for our democracy and its institutions. Le respect, de nos, nos respect for our et de leur electors and for their intelligence. Le respect des traditions the respect parlementaires. of parliamentary traditions. Le the respect for the rights and privileges of parliamentarians. And finally, respect for each other. The way we treat each other. The way we talk to Canadians. In other words, this is all about decorum. I will be a speaker who is firm, thoughtful, collaborative, consistent, and certainly fair. As my track sheet in this House shows, respect, respect will be my It's what will guide me as a steward of the rights and privileges of all elected members in Parliament and beyond the parliamentary precinct, in fostering and supporting open, frank, honest and respectful debate in this House, in, the administration, in administering the services and employees of this House. And this is why I commit to be a ferocious defender, ferocious defender of the parliamentary privileges we enjoy, a defender, a tireless defender of the best ideas, regardless where they come from, to improve services and resources that we need individually and collectively to better serve our constituents and thus all of those 
who live in Canada. Colleagues, if there is one thing I ask you to remember, it is this. Canadians do look to this House to address their concerns, to respond to their needs, to set the example, to show leadership. At its best, Parliament has lived up to and embodied these high principles. So I ask you for your support as Speaker and to work with me in making respect our goal for what we do here every single day as we take our seat in this hallowed chamber. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Miigwech. I will now call upon Mrs. Carol Yout, the Honourable Member from Algoma, Manitoulin, Capuchiki. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. First, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for Nepissing to Ms. Kameng for his service as Speaker of the House. I'd also like to thank people from Capus Casing who have put their trust in me to represent them for the past 15 years. I am honoured to be their member. I begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. It's important that we, as representative of the Crown, acknowledge the people whose lands we stand on, the history that this place represents in this context, especially as we just marked the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation this past weekend. We sit here today at a unique moment in the history of this House. It is obviously quite rare for us to discuss the election of a new Speaker in the middle of a Parliament. In fact, this has been done only once before, when former Speaker John Bosley, who was coincidentally the last Speaker appointed to the role rather than elected, resigned to sit in the Progressive Conservative backbenches in 1986. Speaker Bosley, whom you may remember was commemorated in this House last year following his passing, left the position because he was concerned about the erosion of public respect for Parliament and believed he could do more to build that respect from outside of the Speaker's chair. Speaker Bosley was clearly concerned about how this House was being perceived by the Canadian electorate. The erosion of public respect for Parliament is real, and I believe we, the members of this House, all have a responsibility to work towards improving it. The role of the Speaker as a representative of the House of Commons is to guide, to guide people in debate and to manage the rules and traditions that are dear to us. And what is perhaps the most important right now is to maintain order and decorum, to re-establish the public's confidence in the Parliament as President Speaker Bosley did 40 years ago. I think my experience as Deputy Assistant Speaker has prepared me for this role. Over the past two parliaments and during the first half of the current parliament, I did occupy this position. And during my mandate, I was always fair and reasonable in my ability to maintain order within this chamber. I have made decisions that maybe at times have not been popular, even with members of my own party. Because the duties of the chair demanded it. I have also heard from some members of all parties that they believe I am fair, even handed, and have been consistent in my application of the rules of this House. When we are here, regardless of what our party affiliation is, the rules are the rules. Speaking of political parties, I know that there is more that binds us together than divides us. We are all here because we love our nation and are all dedicated to see it flourish. We may have different ideas about how to accomplish this goal, and it's vital that we encourage healthy debate to find the common ground. However, I feel, as I'm certain many of you do, that at times members can act in a manner that is challenging for this House. I believe that in those moments we do a disservice to this House and to, the Canadians, and to Canadians by allowing unhealthy debate to proceed. My commitment to each of you is that you will have your moment to engage in healthy debate and you will allow your colleagues their moment to a healthy debate without unacceptable interruptions, shouting or heckling. This is how we rebuild the public's trust and respect for Parliament. 
I am also looking forward to following in the footsteps of another of our predecessors, the Right Honourable Jan Sauvé, former Governor General of Canada, who is to this day the only woman who has served as Speaker of the House of Commons. It's been over 40 years uh, since, the last uh, since she last presided over this House, and I believe that we must show young women that they too can see themselves represented in our institution, including as Speaker of the House of Commons. In closing, I would like to remind members that Canadians are looking to us to make Parliament work in a way that will deliver results for them. I have shown throughout my years in Parliament that I have the experience, judgment and temperament necessary for this role that is vital for the functioning of our democracy. Colleagues, this is why I ask for your support. Votre appui est grandement apprécié. Your support apprécié. is greatly Merci. appreciated. Thank you. I will now call upon Ms. Elizabeth May, the Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands, to address the House. She is not with us in the chamber, but we're going to listen to her online. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is an honour to take the floor today during this extraordinary session. Unfortunately, I am unable to be in the chamber in person. And because of my inability to be on an airplane at this point in my life due to having a stroke, I am, as you see, thank, thanks, thank be to God, quite well recovering. But I cannot participate in person, which means I also can't vote, which is a terrible shame. I participate in this way because I want to make sure that this election for the speaker takes into account what I think are the essential elements for the next speaker of the house. We must me, follow the standing order. If you walk down that back corridor that we have there behind the speaker's chair, you'll see the portraits of former speakers. I do think you should pause in front of the portrait of Lucien Lamoureux, who served this place from 1966 to 1974. He was, I think, uh, the, the best of all of our speakers. He personified nonpartisanship. In fact, elected as a liberal in the government of Lester B. Pearson, when he ran for re-election as a sitting speaker, he did so twice as an independent. He also applied our rules, which meant he wasn't always popular and he wasn't elected. He was able to enforce the rules. Now, everyone who's spoken has said our rules are important, but on a daily basis, we ignore standing orders 16 and 18 that require that we respect one another and that we treat each other with respect. And, and, uh, je pense que les mots de and I think mon collègue, the, the words from my colleague, the, the member for help, co colleague, le, le help, help um, rather, I agree with him entirely. I think that respect is the most important thing. But we all, uh, as usual, we need to, we, we, we had a our rules approach that ignore the rules. I do thank the Honourable Member for Nipissing to Ms. Coming for his service and the tragedy that unfolded in this place could have been avoided if we followed our rules. We do have rules for the recognition of guests in the gallery. We do have rules for the recognition of the recognition of guests in the gallery for speakers. And in this place, it's clear that the rules were not followed by recognizing this individual. I the former speaker to recognize someone I thought did deserve recognition in our gallery, only to be told that Dr. David Suzuki didn't qualify. So I know the rules represent a steep hill to climb to recognize someone in the gallery. I can't imagine how this happened, but I also agree words aren't enough. That moment in this house brought back the words of the late Irving Abella, that it was in our history easier to gain entry to Canada as a Nazi than as a Jew. I think we have to do more than say we're sorry. I think we have to atone. We have to open up the records of the Duchesne Commission. We actually have to look at our history, just as we do on the Day of Truth and Reconciliation for the injustices and genocide towards Indigenous peoples. On doit suivre nos we règles. have to follow the our speaker's rules. speaker's role is essential in being the only person who can decide who speaks in question period. And it's been 40 years the speaker has broken the rules every single day, regardless of what speaker we're talking about, by accepting a list from a party whip that tells him or her who speaks and in what order. That abomination has moved 
the system of rewards and punishments from the speaker to the party whip. And the party whips are not the people we want to please if we want this place to operate with respect, to make Canadians look at our House of Commons and think there is a place I respect. That is democracy in action. We can try harder and we can be better. It is truly and to possible. The next speaker and all of the, those running in this candidacy in this election are more than qualified to be good speakers of the House. If it was my honor to fill that role, I, I can't tell you how, how overwhelmed I would be. But I think it's not likely. And I encourage you to vote for the person you think will be your best speaker. I pledge my support to the next speaker, whoever is brave enough to go back to following our rules, that only the speaker, as was confirmed when the Honorable Spe Member for Regina Capel was the Speaker of the House, he confirmed back in April 2013 on a point of order from the late Mark Wara that only the speaker chooses who speaks in question period. It would no doubt improve our proceedings enormously. And with that, I wish you all the best of luck. Bon chance dans cette élection Good luck. à la présidence. Et je veux dire seulement que I miss you like all. I can't wait to see you all again and give every one of you, really, you know I love you all. I really, really miss you and I want to give you a big hug. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Bon chance. God bless you. I invite now Madame now call Alexandra upon Mendes, Ms. Alexandra Mendez, the Honourable Member for Saint Brossard, Lambert, Saint Lambert, 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 to address the House. Mr. Speaker, Speaker colleagues, colleagues, it is always a retrouver. pleasure to find you here, even though these are very sad Je circumstances. I'd like to thank the member from Nipissing Tamiskamang for his collegiality and for the tremendous work he did accomplish as we were undergoing Je enormous change here in the chamber. I'm not opposed to anyone here. I'm I'm here because I have some beliefs that I believe will allow us to approach the responsibilities we have as parliamentarians. I think it is essential and impossible to have diplomatic representatives in the Jewish community, for example, to present our apology and excuses. We cannot rewrite history. We have a collective memory that we all share. And there are 338 of us that represent millions of Canadians, and we were selected to create legislation to represent more than ever their future. And I am very aware of the considerable honor to represent people of Lambert, and I also realize that is a responsibility I have since I was first elected. Some of those responsibilities include and depend on the constant quest for truthfulness and the common good. I also believe that one of our responsibilities is to find joy in the work we do. Loving what we do, this place where we do it, and the people that help us do it, for me, are fundamental aspects of a successful parliamentary life. It can't, and it shouldn't be, all about insults and accusations, about gotcha moments and questionable statements. I associate some of the most meaningful hours I've experienced in this House with debates with members where, where, with debates where members strove to find shared goals, emergency and take note debates, private members' bills and motions, and even some legislative initiatives are often moments where we find our better natures. This is the place where Canada's important conversations should be held, where we seriously debate and humorously disagree. It's a difficult word. <laughs> What I have retained from these opportunities is that we're able to go beyond partisanship when the occasion requires it. And sometimes we can spice up rather dry conversations or technical ones. Holding the government to account is the essential element of parliamentary democracy. No government is immune from the necessary scrutiny of its proposed legislation and its management of the public accounts. 
But Canadians have told us time and again that they expect us to do this with far more civility than they see in this place every day. Reject me if you must, but I should, should I be given the honour of being elected to the chair, I would strive with all my might to bring dignity to our debates by enforcing the rules that we have all chosen to adhere to. I believe in the rules and regulations that govern the House of Commons. I believe in the office of the Speaker that oversees the functioning and administration of this place. I believe in the clerk and the table officers who guide us and provide us with their knowledge and their independent analysis. La dignité est un principe qui me tient beaucoup à cœur. Is a principle close to my heart. No one in this chamber or elsewhere should have to be attacked for their humanity. I'd like to thank the pages that bring us water, and we must have also great respect for the work of our interpreters. Also, the delicacy of the work of table officers must be respected. We all here have one goal to create Mais la good legislation. Aussi en but une énorme importance. Joy is also something close to my heart. The joy of music is something very close to my heart as well. As I said two years ago, I dream of creating a parliamentary choir, something I've wanted to do for several years. Over my years. many years in this place, I've heard people, journalists, staff, staff, sometimes new members, suggest that some of the traditions and rituals we observe are silly or arcane or outdated. I tend to disagree. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to create new rituals that in turn become traditions. This is the people's house, and we are only temporary occupants and guardians of it. Our predecessors have fought hard for our rights as parliamentarians. If you elect me as your speaker, I promise to continue that fight by doing everything in my power to ensure MPs have the safe, productive and collaborative environment to work to do the work that they deserve. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I will now call upon Mr. Peter Shefki, the Honourable Member for Vaudreuil-Soulange, to address the House. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Right Honourable Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Leader of the Bloc Québécois, Leader of the NDP, Leader of the Green Party, dear colleagues and candidates and friends, it is a privilege for me to rise in the House today as an official candidate to the Presidency of our House of Commons, to the Speakership, rather, to present, well, I follow in the path of extraordinary individuals, men and women, who presented to serve us all, two of whom are with us today in this chamber, the Honourable Member for Regina Capel and the Honourable Member for Nipissing Temiskaming. Colleagues, to stand He's here coming. as a candidate for speaker means to stand for the candidacy of the custodian and the guardian of this sacred democratic chamber. And it's not lost on me, colleagues, that I do so 71 years after my grandfather, Luis Gonzalez, fled Spain under dictatorial rule, boarding a ship called the Anna Salen in search of a place where he could speak freely and where he could send a representative to speak on his behalf arriving on the shores of Halifax on December 29, 1952. This past weekend, my daughter Ellie, who just turned seven, came to me and said, Papa, what are you doing? And I said to her that I was running for speakership of this place. She's too young to understand what that means. She's too young to fully grasp the significance of the work that we do here every single day, but she will understand it one day. So colleagues, if you're asking me my two reasons for running, to be your 38th speaker, there they are to be your servant as we honour those that sought this place out in generations past, and to be your servant to help build an even stronger democratic institution for my children, your children, and future generations of Canadians. Colleagues, we're at a pivotal moment in Canadian history. I truly feel that, and through the conversations that I've had with so many of you over the weekend, I know that you feel that way too. We need and have the work ahead of us of rebuilding trust in this place amongst members, of rebuilding trust that Canadians have in this place, of rebuilding trust that our allies and friends around the world have in us. And as your speaker, that will be my primary priority. First and foremost, 
I seek to put in place a policy that will ensure due diligence so that when I rise as your speaker to ask honourable members to rise on behalf of somebody who's in the gallery, that you can do so with trust and with confidence. I pledge to you that within one week of being elected your speaker, I will invite Jewish community leaders from across the country, as well as veterans groups who were also affected by what happened this past Friday, to this place to apologize as your speaker and on behalf of all members of this House. And colleagues, I pledge that I will send a communique within one week of being elected your speaker to the Honourable Speaker of the Parliament of Ukraine, informing him of my intentions to apologize to him and the members of the Ukrainian Parliament. I believe these to be diligent measures and ones that are necessary, colleagues, if we seek to move on and truly reconcile with what occurred on September 22nd. Just as importantly, colleagues, will be my work to ensure that your right to speak freely in this place is defended. The story goes, colleagues, that the distance between the Right Honourable Prime Minister's desk and the desk of the Leader of the Official Opposition was measured in such a way to be the distance of two dueling individuals, their swords drawn, with one inch added in the middle. That inch, colleagues, to symbolize that in this place we solve our differences not through violence, but through discourse and dialogue and debate. Colleagues, as your speaker, I vow to you to do everything that I can within the powers and the tools available to me as your speaker to ensure that when you come to this place every single day to do the hard work of Canadians, that you're able to do that, to share your gift, the gift that your constituents saw in you, and the reason for which they sent you here, to be able to share that gift unimpeded and without fear of intimidation. Chers collègues, depuis 2015, Dear colleagues, since 2015, I've had the privilege of working with you as proud member for Vaudreuil Soulanges, as parliamentary secretary for four different files, and as chair of the committee. For those of you I had the pleasure of working with, I hope you see that I am fair. I am transparent. And I come here every day to work with you, regardless of political parties, so that we can find solutions to improve Canadians' quality of life. Dear colleagues, I want to sincerely thank you for giving me the opportunity colleagues, to address you, you today. to speak before you today, and I hope that you will give me the grand honour of being the 38th Speaker of this House of Commons. Merci. Before I suspend the sitting for 30 minutes, May I bring to the attention, to your attention, that the bells uh, will call, call the members back in the house will not sound not more than five minutes. The sitting is suspended to the call of the chair for 30 minutes. Conformément aux dispositions du règlement, la Chambre va maintenant procéder à l'élection du président. Pursuant to standing orders, the House will now proceed to elect a speaker. Pour ce faire, on va y aller avec ça. Oui. Vous pouvez vous asseoir, il va venir. Monsieur le gendarme, va venir me présenter.
parler. <rire>
C'est celui-là, là Ok, ok, ok. Alors, on va laisser la... Honorable député, Honorable members, je tiens à exprimer I à la Chambre mes humbles remerciements pour le grand honneur 
for the great honor you have been pleased to confer upon me by choosing me to be your speaker. Before we get started, I would just like to thank several people and all of you. First, I'd like to start with the honorable member for Béconcourt, Nicolet Sorel, the dean of the house. This Dean of the House, who's had a long career here at the House of Commons, of 39 years, he's inspiring for us all. There are young people who have just arrived in 2021 and others who have arrived recently during by-elections. And you have before you inspiration for us all, someone who's close to their electorate, their writing, and someone who has served with great integrity since 1984, so congratulations. Perhaps you don't remember. In 1988, I came here as a parliamentary page, and I had the pleasure of serving that gentleman water and to deliver messages on paper. He was kind, upright at the time, and he still is today. He still is, even more so. And I hope that I will have the opportunity to beat your record, at least in this chair, for more than five days. Mais on verra. But we'll on va see. commencer avec cet après-midi. We'll start with this afternoon. I'd also like to thank uh, my honorable colleagues who stood uh, to let their name stand to become Speaker of the House of Commons. Let us all give them a huge round of applause. They are amazing Canadians. They have served this House, especially the speaker, speakership team, uh, the two assistant speakers and the deputy uh, speaker in particular, have served this House very well and with great honour and integrity. And I hope to continue to count on your sage advice and your support as we move forward for the rest of this Parliament. I'm really looking forward to working collaboratively with all of you. And thank you for the applause. I know that uh, in politics, the, uh, there are only two times when people are, give you a strong applause and they're happy to see you. The day you arrive, and of course, the day you leave. <laughs> the speaker, to use the old hockey analogy, is nothing more than a referee. And if there's one thing I know, is that nobody pays good money to go see the referee. <laughs> They go to see the stars, you, the players on the ice. Les hommes et les femmes the men qui and the women dans les who mineurs. have practiced in the minor de leagues for quite some time. And you practice at home with your families se sont ici and who have found themselves chambre. here in this chamber. Mon rôle My en role tant que as speaker is to reassure that the standing orders and rules will be followed. So you can take on what I hope is a friendly and respectful debate and passionate debate here in this House. As I said earlier in my speech to you all, respect is a fundamental part of what we do here. We need to make sure that we treat each other with respect, that we show Canadians the example because there can be no dialogue unless there's a mutual understanding of respect. If there can be no ability to pursue the arguments, to make your points be heard, unless we all agree to extend to each other that sense of respect and decorum. So I'm going to be working hard on this. 
And I need all of your help to make this happen. Because this is the place where hard debates will happen. This is the place where we can have passionate debate. Passionate and respectful debate. Après, commençant aujourd'hui, bientôt, je vais commencer à rencontrer les today, officiers de la table ici. I will meet the table officers. Je vais rencontrer les, uh, ad, les présidents adjoints. I will meet les, with the deputy le, speakers. Le, le vice-président pour discuter comment le, la façon qu'on va procéder. In order to decide how we're going mois. to proceed in pour the remettre, coming months. In order pour remettre to les, pour s'assurer qu'on va in order to make sure, I'm thinking as I speak, to really set the record straight. We have to follow the rules of the House of Commons. And when we follow them, we will have a fruitful debate, important debate. And it will give us the opportunity to proceed with mutual respect. Mesdames et messieurs, merci pour votre confiance. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your trust. I hope that I will earn it over the coming years. I hope I will have the opportunity to speak with each one of you to get to know you better. And in this way, we will really set an example for all Canadians. We want to show them that politics is a noble profession. Thank you, and I wish you the greatest success. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Très honorable. Voilà, mon premier erreur. Le très honorable Premier Ministre. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Monsieur le Président, au nom du gouvernement et de tous les députés de cette chambre, on behalf of the government and all members in this house, I wish to congratulate you for your election. Je veux aussi remercier ceux et celles qui se sont présentés. I also want to thank everyone who ran. Merci de répondre à l'appel à l'appel quand il est venu le temps de garder notre démocratie forte et en santé. Thank you for answering the call when it was time to keep our democracy strong and healthy. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Premier Ministre of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Black Canadian to become Speaker of this House. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Black Canadian to become Speaker of this House. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Black Canadian to become Speaker of this House. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Black Canadian to become Speaker of this House. Mr. Speaker, today you are the first Black Canadian to become Speaker of this House. Inspiring for all Canadians, especially younger generations who want to get involved in politics. Congratulations. This House is the home of Canadian democracy. Members of Parliament come from every corner of the country to represent their communities. Canadians from coast to coast to coast elect us to work hard for them and to be their voices in this place. They elected us to deliver results to help make their lives better. This remains our number one job. And the only way we can make progress together is by respecting each other. La Chambre des communes est un endroit pour débattre des idées. The House of Commons is a place for debating ideas. It's normal that we don't always agree with our colleagues. Mr. Speaker, we elected you to help us to be civil in our debates, to remind us that we are all here for the same reason, which is to serve Canadians. These are consequential times for Canada and for the world. We must continue to work together to make life more affordable, to build more homes, to keep our democracy strong, to fight climate change and power the clean economy of tomorrow. We have to continue our work to ensure that the promise of Canada is held, the promise to improve every generation's quality of life. In these consequential times, Canadians expect us all to work together to deliver results. They expect us to behave to the highest standards. Mr. Speaker, I know you will help us rise to meet this moment. Canada is the best country in the world. Here, Let's here. keep working all together to make it even better. Je vais reconnaître.
Thank you very much and congratulations, Mr. Speaker. I know that you have strong enough arms for the job because I had the uh, difficult task of dragging you all the way to that chair and we thought for a moment that you'd changed your mind when you took a, a turn to, to congratulate <laughs> one of uh, our colleagues on this side. But it is an incredible achievement to serve in the role uh, that Parliament has bestowed upon you. C'est un honneur pour tous et tous et toutes de servir ici à la Chambre des Communes. Chacun parmi eux, parmi nous, doit être fier d'avoir la responsabilité to have the responsibility of working for about 100,000 people among the general public. Sometimes, however, we forget how it works. Sometimes we think the Prime Minister is in charge and the House of Commons is underneath and the people are on the bottom, but it's quite the opposite. The public is actually in charge of our democracy. We are their servants, and the government must serve parliamentarians. That's why Parliament was invented. And the, the reason that these floors and seats are green is because the first commoners met in fields. Uh, they were the peasants and the farmers uh, who were tired of having their crops tacked, taxed away by an impossibly cruel crown. And they gathered to force King John to sign the Magna Carta, the Great Charter, which of course restrained the power of the crown. And today we have a similar circumstance with a government that is excessively powerful and costly, that has overburdened the population, created unprecedented strain, particularly on middle class and working class peoples who are now forced in many cases to live in tents, uh, to lose their homes, who are skipping meals. We have seven million who cannot afford food because of the inflationary taxes imposed upon that food by uh, a, uh, an overly greedy government. And so now more than ever, the role of parliament in restraining the power of the prime minister is primordial. And we will continue to carry, that, carry out that role proudly on the floor of this House of Commons because we will always remember that we are servants and not masters of the nation. Yeah. And, Mr. Speaker, we will do it with common sense. Now, why is this important? I, I hear some members of the government uh, who are, uh, don't like the sound of the word common sense, and we can understand why they wouldn't. But isn't it, isn't it interesting that this is called the House of Commons for a reason? Common wisdom, our common resources, our common heritage, and our common future is determined by the people elected to serve in this place. And we must always do it with common sense. The common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our house. Let's bring it home. I'd like to recognize the leader for the Bloc Québécois. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I need to talk about the person who presided over the House, the member for Bécancourt, Nicolette Sorel. I want to thank him. He was a fine example of impartiality. Before I congratulate you, I want to congratulate candidates who were on the list today and who ensured that our choice was difficult. They are great parliamentarians. 
place au débat qui ont été extrêmement efficaces. They are Et là, je veux parler de vous, Monsieur le Président. Now, je vous félicite. En mon nom et au nom du Bloc québécois, on est très content de vous voir. On est très content de vous voir. On est très content de vous que vous soyez là. Et évidemment, vous avez... Vous savez, tous les présidents qui vous ont précédé avaient le défi de passer d'un siège ou de fonction lorsqu'on était partisan, ou même des fois un partisan. Mais que lorsqu'on devenait président, on mettait les habits de la partisanerie ou le vestiaire et on se drapait de l'impartialité. And take Alors, on the best means of impartiality. I am sure that you will fulfill that role and that you will be impartial. This will allow Parliament to do work great work for the Canadian public, which it does expect of us. I have every confidence that you will be an impartial arbiter if we stick to the hockey Au nom du Bloc and on my behalf and on behalf of the Bloc Québécois, we offer you all our cooperation. Of course, I can't forget my whip and the leader who will work with you. I'm looking forward to working together so that ideas take first place and take first place above everything in this house. Merci pour ces bons commentaires. J'aimerais reconnaître maintenant le chef du Parti néo-démocrate. The leader Merci, of the New Democratic Party. Premièrement, au nom de tous les Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of all the New Democrats, I want to congratulate you for your victory Et, today. Uh, je veux aussi signaler le travail que vous avez fait. I also le travail am looking forward to the work, or rather, I want to congratulate you for the work that you have done as a parliamentarian, member for Hull Aylmer since 2015. I want to say. Beaucoup des membres de la Chambre peuvent dire la même chose aussi. Vous étiez une personne qui a donné des beaux sourires, des bons jours à tout le monde. Et donc, je pense que c'est bien de dire, sans beaucoup d'exception, vous êtes l'un des membres de la Chambre du Parlement. Donc, c'est bien de vous voir dans cette chambre maintenant. Congratulations. I know it's been said, but I want to just underline what having you elected means. First of all, I want to acknowledge the humility that you express, that people don't come to a match to watch the referee, they come to watch the stars. I think you started off with a message of humil uh, humility, which is very powerful. But I also want to acknowledge the, the incredible weight that you now bear and the incredible, the incredible feat that you've achieved. Now when people walk the halls of this of this place, when they look at the pictures on the walls, and they're reminded of some of the great achievements of Canada, some of the grave errors that we've made as a nation, they're one day going to see your face on the walls of this chamber. And what that's going to mean to kids visiting from far and wide who come to the capital city, there's going to be kids who maybe have come here and not seen themselves reflected on the walls. And that's going to change now. That's very <laughs> I know you know how important that is, and it brings me to my next point, and that is the incredible role that you're now going to have to play, Mr. Speaker, to restore the honor of this chamber, something you mentioned in your speech as well. We know there's going to be, rightly so, increased attention on all parliamentarians and on this House, and I have no doubt that you'll be able to satisfy your responsibilities with the utmost capacity, but it is indeed an increased responsibility. I also know that there are deep concerns about divisions in politics and the polarization of debate. And while vigorous debates are, of course, are of course important, there is a certain tone and there's a certain decorum that must be upheld. And when I think about kids visiting, again, I come back to kids visiting this place, and sometimes school kids looking over and watching the elected officials of this country engaging in debate, I'm embarrassed sometimes that kids are watching people yelling out, outlandish things, acting as if it's cool to be yelling at someone while they're speaking. And I hope that you can restore some of that decorum. I think it's important. Everyone's going to have their chance to share their viewpoints. 
But I think it should be done in a way where people are able to express that, and then once they're done, they sit down, someone else can respond and rebut. And I hope that you can create that decorum, restore the prestige of this place, and restore confidence in the important work that happens here. Thank you so much for putting your name forward. Congratulations on being elected. Look forward to working with you. I understand that there is unanimous consent to allow the member for Kitchener South to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And thank you to all my colleagues for this opportunity to give you my congratulations. First of all, I want to say a big thank you on behalf of the Green Party Caucus to the member for Bicancourt, Nicolette Sorel, for their excellent work as interim speaker last week. Mr. Speaker, uh, turning to you, it is a joy uh, to see you in that chair and to address you for the first time in that way. Uh, I deeply appreciate the words you shared with us just hours ago, highlighting how important respect is in this place. That yes, we may have different opinions across uh, the country, that yes, um, the debate here may be difficult at times, but that Canadians expect that this can be a place where parliamentarians can come together to elevate the quality of debate to make progress on what they care about most. And I have no doubt that with you in that chair, with the support of all parliamentarians here, and certainly on behalf of the Green Party Caucus, that you will be well supported to ensure that that continues to be the case. That while this may be at times a toxic place, it doesn't have to be that way, and that I know you will ensure that the debate is elevated here. On behalf of the Green Party Caucus, once again, I wish you all the very best. Thank you. I have a second opportunity to do this correctly. The right honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I wish to inform the House that it is the pleasure of Her Excellency the Governor General that the House shall present their Speaker later this day in the Chamber of the Senate to receive Her Excellency's approval. Uh, Monsieur le Président, je désire informer la Chambre qu'il plaît à son Mr. Excellence, Speaker, le Gouverneur Speaker, Général, d'autoriser la Chambre à présenter son Président plus tard aujourd'hui à la salle du Sénat, où son Excellence the donnera son approbation. Where Her Excellency will give her approval. Thank you. 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 Thank En conséquence, la séance est suspendue jusqu'à la convocation de la présidence.